What's up, guys? You are on the air and off the books with Beth Ann and Samantha. And today we have a special guest with us, Lisa Phipps, yes, Director yes. of Marketing at the Kokomo Public Library, author of the brand new Starfish. Woo! And that's coming out March 9th. Yes, yes, March, March 9th. 9th. So we read the book. Yes, we, we did. We got our hands on the, we got it from um, NetGalley, which that's like a cool thing. I didn't even know about Trisha told us about. It was oh, yeah. really cool, but it was really complicated to like get it yes. from NetGalley <laughs> onto like the Kindle. I was like, I don't it's know. very protected, which about. it should be of yeah. like everybody's because we couldn't read it like on a computer I had to read it on my kindle yeah I was but trying I, to figure out how to sketchy download it at work like on the <laughs> computer and, working. and you can't do that <laughs> <laughs> but also um what was I gonna say oh I got my hands on the actual like copy that you're passing around and I was mm-hmm. like I can't be responsible for this purchase <laughs> so I'm gonna find a way to download it some other way because I cannot like I can't like if I spilled something, like I was just gonna be like, no, I can't be the person <laughs> that does that. People, I, I I told them when I when I circulated that, I was like, feel free, people, leave notes in it. I would love to know what you're thinking. I saw that. You know, so I yeah. wouldn't bother me a bit. That that'll be fun to see people say, this poem is wonderful, or what were you thinking right here? This is stupid, you know, whatever you want to say. And then I'll go, oh, Cheetos, someone was having lunch. <laughs> Fine. that's actually a pretty cool way to like have that memory but I was just mm-hmm. so scared because I have a kid too and oh yeah. I've had to replace a many library books so <laughs> like, how are we gonna explain this yeah it's like, oh, no, it's like, that's okay. I'm sobbing with all the tears like I'm so sorry <laughs> um but we read the book and it was literally phenomenal it was like, really you good. Are a master like I can't even like applause like, like snaps for days like this <laughs> book was so genuine and moving and like I have like I've thought it over and over and over I'm a really slow reader mm-hmm. really slow so it took me a while <laughs> Samantha can attest she has to pester me constantly because <laughs> she's like okay how far are you and I'm like oh chapter six she's like I finished it yesterday <laughs> <laughs> I'm like well, okay I'm getting there slowly but surely but um like there were so many things that like kept going through my head and savoring and like how it made me like reflect as being a parent too, like what I want. Like, I don't, there's so many emotional things. I cried. I know. I texted over Miranda and, over. and I was like, I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I told you sobbing, sobbing, but it was just like a mix of like frustration. But, and I love that it covered the gamut of emotions. Like there was, it was so much annoyance, but like not annoyance at the book, annoyance at like characters. The struggle between certain characters and like her dynamic and what she was feeling inside and also like her triumph and like, oh my gosh, like I'm trying not to spoil it. <laughs> it was just- Yeah, sometimes it's hard to talk about a book without like- Spoilers. Giving something We're away. Really guilty but... of doing that every single podcast we do about a book, we spoil the entire thing. So we have to enter like spoilers. <laughs> we more spoiler than... alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Oh man, but it was so good. You are a fantastic writer. And like, I wish I had like this much of your talent, like this, just, just uh. this much. It... I've always said I was going to write a book. And you know, I have all these ideas in my head. I'm just like, mm, yeah, one day when even, I'm like, I couldn't even deliver seven. like that. Yeah, like it it was so breathtaking is a good word for it. And in every yeah. best possible way. And I went into it not knowing because we read so much like murder, murder thriller. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it because all I read is about murder and like I don't know. <laughs> like the person was Teen kidnapped and they have to go with like the FBI. <laughs> she was a lot of romance and it was so out of like our normal wheelhouse that it was so refreshing Mm. to sit down and read something that was so like real because it is that was like my goal um I'm I'm trying to let you guys talk without jump I'm trying to jump in at at the right time so if I I jump in at the wrong time say shut up Lisa no Uh, but yeah that was one of my goals was to be authentic um uh, to what the fact that person experiences like mm-hmm. and um 
just based on feedback from reviewers and readers, that's like the number one thing people say. <laughs> I had this one person, I think it was on Goodreads. It might've been on social media. I, I'm, things are getting blurry, but, um, and she said, did you read my diary <laughs> from when I was a kid? And, um, and then I had the sweetest thing. Um, a teacher read it. So she somehow got a copy of an ARC and um, no, wait, it was a librarian. And so she was telling the kids at her school about it. And she said, this little girl goes, oh my God, that is my life. <laughs> She goes, when can we read it? When can we read it? And she's like, March 9th. And she's like, that's forever away. <laughs> but it kind of made me happy and it made me sad when the little girl said, that's my life. Because yeah, I was just like, yeah. oh, oh, baby, 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 you know. And, and you know, um, so it made me feel good. And then I had one comment from on a Goodreads. This girl said um, that, um, I think she'd won an ARC because um, the publisher's doing some ARC giveaways through Goodreads. And anyway, she got her hands on it and she's been telling everybody about it ever since she read it, but she talked to her niece about it and her niece read it and and her niece is, is a fat girl and she um, always wears like dark clothes, um, long sleeve shirts to not show her fat arms, all that kind of stuff. Typical, you know, way that fat people are taught to dress, fat girl rules, one of the many fat girl rules. And um, as soon as she read the book, she asked her aunt, she said, can we go shopping for me some new clothes? And I was like, oh. That's fantastic. And I just started crying because I'm like, that's it's starfishing so right there. That yeah. is starfishing 101, you know? Right. And that I was, was, was so cool. happy. And I was like, oh, <laughs> so I'm like, happy, crying, happy, sad, happy, <laughs> you know? Down, and yes. so it's, it's um, but that was the goal to be authentic. And I think, I think that was the, the point is that it's, it, it's real. And if you've ever experienced it to any degree, yeah, you get it. Yes. I think that's what Samantha and I kind of agreed on because even though our experience isn't exactly Ellie's experience, um, that there are so many things that we both were like, absolutely. Like, this is me. Like, yeah, I, this is something that I've seen, experienced, felt like, and it all could have, it all could be interpreted like I'm getting emotional. <laughs> it all could be like <laughs> it all just could go back and just we just relived so many of those moments and we were just like, like I think in the book, is it was it in the back of the book or where did I maybe it was in my mind that I thought of it, but to have that material now mm. where mm. that way I have now, I could have had it then. Like, yes. I think that's so brilliant because it needs to be in schoolhouses everywhere. And I guess backtracking, um, the book is about um, a young girl named Ellie mm -hmm. and uh, it, her experience growing up being fat. And so, and, and all the societal cues and quote unquote mm -hmm. rules and things that are pushed on her life and her experiences through that. And I, I think that's all we kind of want to share because yeah. that journey is very important that you take that yourself and there's an amazon page you're famous now there's an <laughs> amazon page I was, like, this is so cool. I was like i have to look a review and be like 80 stars um but and i love also that when we had emailed you when i had emailed you about um certain things that you we want to keep in mind and stuff and you said that you want to take the stigma off that word and i was like mm -hmm. that is so amazing how many other words you know are there that we could do that with and just that one simple statement was just like, you know, it makes you realize you think all wrong, you know what I mean? Exactly. And how that could be so freeing and stuff. So, um, why do you question about that? Why do you feel more comfortable using the word fat instead of, you know, overweight or, you know, general terms that people use? Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, um, people would use the word, uh, 
chunky, uh, plump, big boned. I mean, there were all these different ways of saying fat. Um, and that, but fat was always, it was almost like you were trying not to say it, you know, by, by the other yeah. things. Um, but really the reason I'm, I use the word fat um, and I'm not the only one, but I, I think it's really important that, that I take on this responsibility of making that word a descriptor. It just yeah. needs to be a descriptor, like br brunette, um, tall, short. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you say something, you don't go, you're tall. It's not like an insult, right? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not, it's not an insult. You're, you're brunette. But no, yeah. there's no hate. Right. There's, you know, it just is. But when you say you're fat. Somewhere along the line that got mutilated yeah. that way. It, it's become, it's become an insult. So it doesn't just mean, you know, this is what your shape, your body shape is. It means you're ugly, you're undesirable, you're uh, lazy, you're undisciplined, you're stupid. Um, because if you've ever done any research, which, you know, of course I have, because I wanted to make sure my experience as a fat person was a typical one. I didn't want to just assume. And, um, but if you look, studies show that children, elementary school children, if asked, automatically assume if they see like a silhouette of a fat person, that that person is lazy, that that person is stupid and they don't want to be their friend. And this is elementary school wow. children. And then, and you know, children, um, so they're, they're not born to hate like that. They, it's what, it's what society, it's the cues they've picked up on society right? and or from the adults in their life. And, um, so fat has become an insult. And so, and it shouldn't be, right. um, it shouldn't be so, you know, forgive the pun, weighted as a word. Um, when you hear that word, it means so much more. And so I'm sort of on a personal crusade, <laughs> crusade yeah. to take it back. But there are some other um, people in the body acceptance and body positivity movement that agree. Um, and they're doing that as well. So yeah, that's that's why I say fat. I don't say, you know, overweight or whatever. And I think there's a few times in the book where I I have said not just fat, but some others, but it's because Ellie is herself. Yeah. And the people around her are, you know, avoiding the word and yet yeah. so you dealing with the word. Happening. Right. Yeah. Right, so that's why in, in the book, um, it's a little bit different. But when I talk about it as an issue, I just say fat because that's just what it is. And then, you know, it, it shouldn't be any different than tall or anything else. I agree. And I'm glad we were able to like broach that just so that people can hear and understand because I think it should be like that movement just should start, just be a thing. And mm -hmm. if we could even dig up other things, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it taught me a lot. And thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. Cause oh, it really made me really value. I was talking to Samantha, how as parents, like what do we need to do so that we can be, give our children a better outlook, something better, do better. I mean, in everything, like it was just, it was just really awesome. So we'll get into <laughs> questions before I just continue to go <laughs> and start crying. Cause it was, it was, it was fantastic. Oh man, it is fantastic. I'm going to reread it. Yeah. Hold them right I know. <laughs> hold, hold them in. Like, just taping, taping up the tear ducts here. Get little, little bags under your eyes. Just, <laughs> just to catch There it. is a resource, though. I'll throw this in real quick. There is a resource on my website, um, the resource page. There is an anti-bullying brochure that I created. And I worked with um, a woman named Judith Maltz. Um, and she gives tips to parents on how to not... Uh, be like Ellie's mom, who is very hurtful, um, you know, because Ellie's mom, obviously, you know, as all moms does, doesn't intentionally right. want to hurt Ellie. She wants to help her, but oh my God, does she go about it in yeah. the wrong way. Right. And, and 
what I do yeah. or the blinders thinking we well the way we do it is the just the right way and that's it and then in the process causing those scars yeah, more than yeah. even what the child is even going through at all yeah so so like one of the great tips that you know is on there um is you know you don't ever comment about your child's weight connected to appearance so in other words you don't say you would say oh I love that brand new t-shirt you're wearing it really expresses your personality and how creative you are but you don't say I really like it because it makes you look slimmer yeah you know there there's the difference right there right. so you you can be you can comment on it but you know you want to bring out that you want them to be proud about who they are and feel comfortable wearing that new t-shirt because it expresses who they are, not because it makes their arm look smaller or, you know, makes them look skinnier or anything else like that. And, you know, if someone loses weight, you don't want to say, oh my gosh, have you lost weight? You look great now because, oh, you know what that means? That means they look like crap before. before. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, if, you know, you just don't say anything. If they've gained or lost, you just don't say anything. Yeah. And but if you, if someone has lost weight and they're kind of looking for that compliment, Maybe then you can do something and say stuff like, um, you know, if they kind of say, well, what do you think? You say, you're beautiful because you've always been beautiful. And I support you at no matter what size you are because you're, be you know, there's ways to handle that. But um, she has a great source and she was so kind to let me um, use that information. But so anyway, just to throw that out there, there's the two yeah, mentioned we'll parenting. Try to link that. Well, I'll put that in the description because um, I have okay. that written up and I'll just add those things so that people can have access to that because that's important. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's great. So um, you want to start off, Samantha? Sure. Jones? So in the book, there was, there were a bunch of different languages. There was, yes. I think there was French, there was Spanish. Was that yeah. all French and Spanish? And then like the body language thing also yeah. language, which was so good. And um, I know <laughs> you answer some of these questions in the back of the book, but I, I honestly like didn't want to read them because I wanted to like hear it come from you. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to I like, you know. <laughs> There's French because Ellie takes French and then there's Spanish because Ellie's next door neighbor who becomes her friend Catalina is uh, Mexican American. And then um, <clears throat> Ellie is from a mixed faith family. Her father is Jewish. So there's some Yiddish in there. Just so, um, so there's a little bit of four different <laughs> languages. Yeah. English. So and then there's Texan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I missed that one. <laughs> Are you bilingual? Me? No, I would. Okay. Um, I, so I took French years ago and I lived in Texas and it made me wish I had taken Spanish years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm trying, um, that's one of my like bucket list things. I want to get back to speaking Spanish, speaking French and learning Spanish because I think um, first of all, I like to travel and whenever this virus gets better, I want to go back to Europe because I really like it there. Um, but I just think it, I think it's just smart to be able to communicate with as many right. people as you can. So. I wish I could speak French. I took French for three years and I could maybe tell you like four sentences. <laughs> you know, my favorite, my favorite phrase was uh, when I, years ago, they used to only have travelers checks, which if you don't know what that is, don't tell me because then you'll make me feel really, really, really old. But um, it was basically before credit cards and it was a way to, you know, change currencies without losing a lot of your money in case the exchange rate wasn't good. But anyway, so I had this down pat. Est-ce que vous cachez mon chèque? Which was, can you cash my traveler's check, right? So <clears throat> that's the one thing that I have always remembered. Yeah. Awesome, that's awesome. Okay. I know, like, I don't even know if I know a single word. <laughs> Let's, like, try to dig into, bust out some, some French knowledge. <laughs> yeah. I think I could say, <laughs> yeah. I think I can say, <clears throat> excuse me, my friend, um, je parle français un petit peu, which means I speak a little bit of French. <laughs> I, I understood like, that. Yeah. Don't ask me how yeah, to say it. 
<laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, I don't know French at all, so you got me. Beat. <laughs> Okay, so I have um, a quote picked out um, and it's where she says, she's a writer and a magazine editor, but spins her words for a different reason than I. Mm -hmm. and I plan to become a storyteller and a poet to help people feel what it's like to live in someone else's skin. Um, Mom's a journalist determined to expose all that's wrong in the world and spotlight everyone's flaws, not caring if she gets under people's skin. And I was thinking it's really amazing what, um, mark the people closest to us really make on our lives mm -hmm. and so I wanted to ask when did you find out in particular for you when you found out that your language like your words were powerful like that as far as you being a writer like when did you learn that your words were powerful like because Ellie here obviously knows like this is the mark that I'm going to make because I'm going to use basically my powers for good as I guess that's how I kind of took it so because you obviously have like a powerful language about you but do you know when you found that like when that kind of like light bulb came on you were like this is this is it like or did okay, you I know can, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the story but then <laughs> you're gonna know something really okay so I'll tell you the story I'll tell you um okay I can't name names okay but Fair I enough. I can I can tell you um I used to I was always, I've always been an uh, art artist in some, fan, in some form or another. Um, <clears throat> when I was little, I was always either drawing, writing, reading, or listening to music. I'm, I'm just totally an art person. Right. And that's why I don't do math. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> so <clears throat> I did a lot of art and I, was, I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to be an artist and I will write as well. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I mean, I took private art lessons, blah, blah, blah. And then I had an art teacher whom I did not like in high school. And I said, I am not putting up with this person for four years. <laughs> so when I was a sophomore, I was like, I tapped out. I was like, no, I'll go back to, you know, I'll resume art when I get into college. And I had a friend named Kaza, who's a, isn't that a great name, Kaza? I love that name. That. Anyway, she, guys, she was two years older than me. So she was a senior and I was a sophomore. And she was like, I, I was just going to take, I don't know, some other class. And she said, take creative writing. All the seniors are taking it. And it's going to be like a fun <laughs> blow off class. And I was like, okay. And so I went in there and I sat down. And the guy I had a crush on sat <laughs> diagonally across from me, ahead in front of me. And I look over at Kaza and she grins. She knew he was going to be in there. She knew my crush, like my love of my life was going to be in there. Did she set you up? Yes, yeah, she told me something. <laughs> and so, um, and I'm sitting there and, he, you know, I had another class. He was in band with me as well, but he didn't know who I was, like from Adam. And, um, but it was nice to drool over him. <laughs> and uh, so, anyway, so our first assignment was to write a poem. And um, the teacher wanted us, her goal for the class was for as many of us as possible to get published in some way. And so we all had to write a poem and we studied poetry, blah, blah, blah. And so she entered it into a contest of Indiana University Kokomo and mine won, one of the whatevers. Okay. And um, so <clears throat> she put on a piece of paper, you know, like the five winning poems. And she told the class, you know, um, tell me which, you know, for tomorrow, go through them, tell me which one you like best and why. But ignore Lisa's because we've already, you know, you've already read hers. Well, of course they hadn't because you don't do that, right? You know, I mean, you, you're, yeah. you're like, yeah, okay, I'll read it, but you don't. Yeah. <laughs> and so we circled up and um, she started with me because I always like to go first if I can. And um, I, you know, I said which, which poem I liked and then everybody else in the class liked my poem best and, and including him. And um, he was a, the star basketball player as well, Ooh. let me just say. 
So, you know, in Indiana, that's king, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, and so we go around and she goes, you guys, I told you, you know, ignore Lisa's poem. And he stopped, like, stopped. And he was like, you wrote this? And I'm like, oh my God, he actually, he, he made eye contact with me. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, um, <clears throat> I just nodded because yeah. I was like, oh. Like, and, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, you wrote this. I'm like, yeah. He said, you're an amazing writer. Mm. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to be a writer for the rest of my life now. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and, and you know what the funniest part is to me is the poem was all about him and he never knew. Oh, I know. Oh, you know and he was like, can I have a copy of this? And I was like, yeah. I was just shaking my head. I never could say anything. But um, <laughs> it, that's when it first started because that made me realize that I had the power to get through to people. Yeah. Um, in a way that I didn't before. But what was interesting was, um, believe it or not, because you guys work with me, um, you know I'm not a quiet person, <laughs> um, but I was as a kid um, for the, lots of different reasons because of my, my history. Um, I just didn't talk to people and um, I remember when I became a journalist and I started writing a weekly column that someone who had known me for decades came up to me and said, who knew you, you even had anything to say? And I was like, <laughs> kind of a backhanded compliment. No. Yeah. And like, just like, oh, and, but I wanted to say to her like, oh, you have no idea what yeah. I like to say, you know what I mean? <laughs> but those two things kind of between, you know, um, getting through to the love of my life who I, you know, I never dated him or anything else. But, um, and then, uh, you know, her realizing, you know, that she's like, you, you're a really powerful writer. Who knew you had anything to say? And I was just like, oh girl, oh girl, you know? So I think those two moments are, are the times where I, I have realized, that made me realize, um, the power that I had, the gift that I had. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yes. Yes, hundred percent. Oh yeah. Good. See, you're so much calmer than me than I would have been. Like in that situation, I would have been a creeper. I would have been the biggest creeper ever. I would have had all my friends like stalk. Oh no. Okay, so here's here's the secret. The don't tell anybody. You know, I know no one else is going to hear this. Um, but I used to send him cards anonymous oh. yeah okay. yeah I was yeah. his secret I'd sign him secret admirer that's amazing that yeah is I've never had one of those I know so it was it was you before social that. media that was the only way I a secret admirer the other way around I see right. <laughs> you yeah. like you've never had a, like you've never admired someone like, oh I've know? definitely creeped on people yes <laughs> why do you say <laughs> Oh man, that's, that's great. Oh gosh, that's awesome. Whew. All right. Okay. <laughs> now that we know that. I don't, no, you're a creeper. <laughs> we haven't already established that. <laughs> um, what was your process in finding a publisher? Oh yeah. That's... My agent did it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I have an agent and uh, her name's Liza Fleisick and she's like the most wonderful agent um, with Liza Voice Agency out of New York. And most writers this, these days uh, do have agents because um, for like a billion reasons, yeah. uh, one of which is it's just hard to even get your manuscript into a house because most houses are what they call closed. In other words, they won't even look at your stuff right. oh, wow. um, unless you have an agent. Um, and then uh, if you saw the contracts, <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. you have to sign and, yeah. you know, Liza a, used to be a, um, uh, an attorney. So, um, so 
what she did. So the hard part really for a writer right now is getting an agent. And then once you get an agent, your agent is, I mean, it's not easy to get published up just because you have an agent, but right. the starting point is getting an agent. So you get an agent and then your uh, agent decides, you know what, this is the house we should try to get into, or this is the editor we should try to pair you up with. And, um, and so Liza got me in with my editor, who is uh, Nancy Polson. She's a legend that I cannot say enough good about. Um, she has her own imprint with Penguin Random House called Nancy Polson Books. And um, Nancy bought Starfish in a preempt. And a preempt means um, we were going to send it out and we had even actually sent it out to a few editors, but Nancy was like, I like this, I want this. And we're like, then we told everybody, sorry, ignore that, you can't have it. Okay. She wants it, <laughs> yeah, luck, you know, <laughs> it's, called a, it's called a preempt. So basically it just means that an editor jumps in and says, I want this, don't let anyone else even look at it. Oh, wow. Um, so that was, that was good. Does so, that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. so when okay. you got the agent, did you already have like a pitch for Starfish? Or like, did like, mm -hmm. was that already like roughed out as a thing that you were ready? Like, here's what I have, like, let's, no. It was okay. already done. So it was already done? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yep. So You normally don't want to even go to an agent until you have a completed as perfect as you can get it manuscript. Okay, that's my naivety because I don't know much about all that process because I know that people, I know people who've self-published, but that's not anything no, to say. So I didn't know like- Yeah, it's a totally different beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, that's really cool. So you had like, so at that point then, was it already like written to this um, like young adult-esque, well, it's not really, it's not young adult. It's more like junior. Is it young adult or is it juvenile fiction or it's, like what is middle, your middle grade? But middle grade, okay. fun fun fact, fun fact, which I mentioned in the back of the book. Um, it was originally written as a young adult novel. Right. So when you presented it, was it in that young adult format? When I presented it to my agent, it was a young adult novel, and. Um, she approached Nancy with it and Nancy was like, can the three of us have a conversation? So we did like a three-way call and she said, you know, it's beautiful. I love it. I have no doubt in my mind that it will sell as a young adult novel, but yeah, I really think you should rewrite it to middle grade and here's why. Um, she said, you know, if you write it for YA like it is, she said the people who are going to read it are going to be people in, you know, upper high school, um, maybe, you know, first couple of years of college. Mm -hmm. And they're going, it's going to be like a book of reminiscence. They're going to go, yep, that happened to me. And it sucked so bad. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she said, but if you make it middle grade, you're going to hit all the kids when they're being bullied the most, because most of your bullying comes in middle grade and junior high, right? I mean, that's yeah. when it that's when it at least feels more intense, if not right. is more intense. And she said, and you're going to reach them while they're being bullied, and you're going to give them the tools they need to know to have to be able to deal with it, and you're going to let them know that there's something wrong with the people who bully them and not them. Right. And maybe, 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 maybe you might keep some of these bullies from bullying people. <laughs> and it was like, well, Duh, Lisa, <laughs> why didn't you think of that, right? <laughs> and so, I mean, literally, um, I was, and, and she goes, and I think it's not that big of a deal, you know, you just have to cut out all the romance, because she, you know, was, um, had there was romance as well. She goes, you just had to cut out the romance of it. So, <laughs> what was funny was when I took, I was like, done? Yes, yeah. I will do that. No problem. I love that. And, but I mean, it was genius because I was like, 
this is why she's a legend. I mean, Nancy Polson is a legend. And I'm like, duh, in one conversation, I have totally understood why everybody loves you and how smart you are. Um, and <laughs> I had the manuscript and so I deleted all of it. And I was like, oh, I've, I've got almost half left. And <laughs> And then, so I was just like, then I went through some of the poems and I was like, yeah, but I really don't need that one. And then I was like, well, I got a third of the book left. So yeah, oh I kind of, um, once I sliced and diced it, I had about a third of what, it, and I had to just write brand new for the other two. Wow. So like, yeah. were you anxious or excited or? I was like, totally excited. Totally okay. excited. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I'd be like, oh my God. I'd have been like, <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Life is fine. Well, I think fine. what helped was, you know, I was a journalist for years and I was also an editor for years. So yeah. I totally yeah. get yeah. being an editor and I totally get being edited. And so I was like, well, duh. Yeah. So you uh, were, had the tools already, the experience to be able to adapt and fly with it. Like, oh yeah. I, I, like, I don't get offended by it because I was like, she was so right. She was so right. Nancy, Nancy was so right. I was just like, and as soon as I chopped away the two thirds of the book and I ended up with this third, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be exactly what I really want it to be anyway. Right, in your heart you know, and I was like, oh, I could see yeah. it, you know, and then I was like, so I was excited about it. I, it, didn't bo it didn't bother me. I, some people were like, you have to cut what? <laughs> and I was just yeah. like, no, but it's really easy. I mean, because yeah. I could see it. In my like, head. I'm freaking out for you, and it's already done. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, no, I could do that. I get it, you know, because I knew, I knew where it was, where it needed to go, and how to get it there, you know? Right. So, um, I mean, I'm making a sound. Well, you know. Like, I snapped my fingers, and it happened. <laughs> Like it happened overnight and you just magically <laughs> came up like we're done. Yeah. Okay, two hours. Give me yeah, a quick okay. deal. Like, five together. minutes, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but um but I was excited about it because yeah. it was like, oh my gosh, this is the book that's really in my heart, that's like so yeah. in my soul, you know. So that's yeah. Really cool. Yeah, because I had read that little excerpt in the back, but I didn't know exactly how you had gotten there. Like to that point, and I was like, I wonder what had already been done before she was given this news, and how that mm -hmm. kind of made made you feel. Because I know what I, it wasn't done to me, so we. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's really awesome. So, and I I think it's so cool because, um, it's just something I want to give to Hayden to read. Like mm -hmm. when your book comes out, I'm going to get a copy, and mm -hmm. it's going to be something that she needs to see to experience mm -hmm. because I just feel like if I'm any kind of mom I would do that so she can see the world and in, in all through all that lens no matter what the situation is like we have to be able to have you know a level of human decency and respect for people in general it just I don't know it's just so well and it's applicable to anybody I mean yeah yes. it's about a fat kid but it's for anybody who's ever you know any it's it's you can extrapolate right so yeah. if you've been bullied because you have your race or your religion or your gender or your sexual yeah. preference whatever yep. the principles hold true and that's the other thing I like about it is yeah. that you know it translates and one of the biggest things that people keep saying is um librarians and others um that are they're like we need parents to read this this yes. should be something that all ages read it's written for yeah. middle grade yeah. teenagers re need to read this you know um who have sisters and brothers who are younger and yes. you know and who have gone through it and not realized you know the message and the learning and then that parents it's there's a big push for parents to read it which makes me happy makes me very happy and i love it that it's so because you wrote it it was so concise and it just was so straight to the point and every I like hung on every single word because like I don't know how you did it but the imagery was always just there yeah like I have super relatable like yes. the pool the pool scenes 
and like the I dumping just, out your like school supplies, your new school supplies. It's like that uh, was me. <laughs> no, like yeah, I, I wrote in my Kindle, I was like, yes, girl. <laughs> I was like, that is so true. <laughs> I was like, that is so me. But like then the parts where I cried because like because I was bullied because of my beliefs and what I look like, because I wear skirts all the time and you know, people would tell me I'm so stupid and that they would never be dropped dead. You know, they wouldn't drop dead looking like me and, or, mm-hmm. you know, the gamut that just, and I was beat up a lot in high school and stuff. And it was just like, I hated seeing her go through like all those different things. And I could relate so much. And then thinking about my own kid and like what she would go, whatever she'll face with society and being able to prepare her with those tools. And I have something now to kind of like show her these are the things people go through. These are some of the things that they don't look exactly the same, but that I went through and I want you to kind of see what's going on. And it was just like, like you said, you can relate completely. Like Samantha said, she told me, she's like, that's what I would do. I would float around in my pool. I'd be in my pool all the time. Mm -hmm. That was like kind of my escape. And I'm like, I would read Mm -hmm. my escape, you know? And um, I think that's why it was so like heartfelt and um, that I hung on it so much because I, everybody, everybody can relate to this. Everybody. Mm-hmm. And it means something that there's a voice to it. And I, lo- I love that. I love yeah. that. It was interesting to me when um, one of the readers, I think on Goodreads, said, Oh my God, when she compared her shadow to the other person's shadow, I did that all the time. You know, I mean, as a, as a fat girl. I would, I would hate being on the playground when you could see your shadow, because then it was just like, you know, shadows at a certain time of day, you look giant anyway. And she was just like, oh my God, how did, you did that too? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you don't feel like you're the only one in the whole wide world. Yeah. Right. Which is the point. You're not alone in it. Yeah. 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 Like there's a part where she talks about fat dar and how she can feel when something is coming, like the attack is coming. And I was like, I don't know what I would call it, but I get that because I knew as soon as I was being approached or something was going to, I knew instantly that it was just going to be this tongue lashing thing or this, let's go grab a hockey stick out of the gym and be the crap out of this girl. Or like, you know what I mean? I knew like things were coming and it was just like, oh, like somebody sees like that this is a thing. And that, you know, I didn't have to, you, you know, like I said, I just wish I had it. So, you know, you didn't have to at least suffer alone or have the confidence to be able to stand up and say, and I love how she learns how to stand up for herself. Mm-hmm. That was brilliant. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think like the, this, like the parts with the, her doctor, her therapist were my favorite parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was so empowering. Yeah, it was funny because one of my, one of my weaknesses is trying to come up with clever names for characters. Um, I have, um, I know a person who can come up with the best character names, like, it was so good, though. I even asked I that. really struggle with that. So I tend to name people after people just as like a way to honor them. Yeah. Um, but I did have fun with Dr. Wood by calling her Dr. Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was really proud of that because I was just that like, was you know, because a snarky kid who doesn't want to go to therapy, she's not she's going to make fun of her. Right. You're going to you're going to alter the name. Yeah. And I was like, Dr. Wouldn't you like to know, you know, and um but a lot of people like that. And someone asked me the other day, why did you feature therapy so much in the book? And I was just like, oh, lots of reasons. First of all, you know, there's such a stigma against um, uh, therapy in the world yeah. um, and mental illness. And not just even, you know, going to therapy for mental illness, but going to therapy just because there's so many emotions you're going through for whatever reason. If you need support, yeah. Yeah. And then when you do, you know, I mean, when you've been constantly treated like crap for years and you've kept it bottled up, whenever you deal with it, it's going to get really messy. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's not something normally a, just a good friend or a parent can help you with. And then plus I wanted kids to know it's okay right. to go for help and need help and ask for help. Um, and your parents aren't gonna always have the answers and that's okay, that's okay. And you know what, I don't know, but I, I never wanted to talk to my, I, I didn't have a dad growing up. So I never wanted to ha- talk to my mom 
I never would have talked to my mom about stuff that was going on. Um, but I needed to talk to somebody. Right. Um, so that was that was part of that. Um, but you you just asked a question and I got off topic there, I think, a second. Um, didn't you? I don't think so. Did I? Oh, the fat dar, the fat dar. That's oh, what it was. Yep. I was, I was like, you're great. Keep going. Um but one of the things I, I, this really came home in college was I was talking about uh, fat dar um, to this girl and she was fat, but not as fat as me. Cause I call it like the acceptable level of fatness and then the unacceptable level of fatness. Like there's like this, this spectrum, right? Oh. So you can be a little fat and you know, you can find clothes in a regular store and you can do this and you can do this and you can have a boyfriend or whatever. And you get fatter and you get treated worse and worse and worse the fatter you get. And so there's this whole spectrum. But anyway, I was telling, and so she was on this, this end. So she was like, you know, fat, but, you know, could shop at what I call normal stores. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so she was, in my opinion, naive about the whole spectrum and how it all works. Mm -hmm. which was good for you. You didn't, you've, you've not experienced it, right? So um, I was explaining that. I said, I can walk in a room and go, you hate fat people and you hate fat people and yeah. you hate fat people. And she's like, no. And I'm like, oh yeah. And I started naming the girls in the dorm because I was a RA in college. I was like, this one's a fat phobe. And she's like, uh-uh. Because this one girl's like, was like the life of the party, loved everybody, everybody loved her. You know, she walked down the hallway, everybody talked to her, she talked to everybody. You're like, oh, uh, oh. Uh. And I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And this girl <clears throat> who was sitting there, she chimed in, she goes, actually, Lisa's right about her. Because she took me aside and she said, I am so glad they didn't have me room with her because I would have refused to room with her. That's ridiculous. She goes, there's no way I would ever room with a fat person. That's just gross and disgusting. And so the, you know, the friend who was fat, who was, you know, she goes, all of a sudden her eyes were open. I mean, I could like see it. I could Either see way. like this light bulb moment. And she goes, she thinks like that? She goes like, yeah. so what if you have a fat roommate? What if you have a gay roommate? What if you have a black roommate? What, it, what's it matter? And she's like, because she finds it disgusting. Yeah. She's, she finds fat people disgusting. And she told me that because she, she actually said those words. And she's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, don't you. It's almost <laughs> like you develop like these don't survival, you. like fight or flight survival instincts, like mm -hmm. so that you can, mm -hmm. I don't know, like it's almost like walking through a minefield or something. You have to know or you're going to, you know what I mean? That's exactly it. it. It is a survival technique because you live in a constant brace for impact exactly. mode. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. You do. Whenever you've been, especially when you've been bullied, and and I, this is people who have also been um, abused, right? Mm -hmm. You live in this, like, and you can even feel it in your body. You know, you tense up. You can feel it in your shoulders. You can feel it in your stomach, you know, depending on, you know, whatever. But you live in a constant brace for impact mode and, um, and you are hyper vigilant of your surroundings. And you, so you know, you know that slightest little change in atmosphere, change in attitude, change in atmosphere, change in the look in their eye, change in how they turn and you pick, it's the hypervigilance is what it is. Right. Yeah. So, man. Sorry, I'm trying to find our next question. Oh, no, no you're fine. fine. Okay. Um, I got down a rabbit hole. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Hoppity hop. So do you think yes. that you're going to continue writing? Yes. Oh, good question. I'm ready to answer. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. Um, I'm writing now. I don't know any writer 
who isn't always writing a book. Okay, fair. I have like, I think at last count, I have five or six started, but one of them that I'm working really hard on, one of them I'm working really hard on right now. Are you just going to um, write to um, middle grade? Or are you going to do YA, adult, or whatever um, looks your fancy at the time? Like whatever reaches to, you know what I mean? Like, well, let me just tell you what my my agent says. She says, okay. "Stay in your own lane for now." <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically, what she means is, now that I have a middle grade book coming out my at least the next few need to be middle grade because okay you know people find you and they like you and then they start watching for your book and wanting to read it right so they're they, it's like an expectation thing. yeah they want like second. Um, yeah um so she she that's her little phrase is stay in your own lane for right now um i would i don't really i would love to write a picture book mm -hmm. But they're the hardest to write, believe it or not, even though they're the fewest wow. words, they're the hardest to write. I think that's probably why they would be hard. It's yeah. A few things. Yeah. And I am, I am not ever going to write the happy bunny in the forest story because <laughs> that's not who I am. Um, I would love to write the happy bunny in the forest, but I'm more like the bunny just got eaten by the fox kind of girl. Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> We relate, I mean, I, you have our part there, yeah. I am. Um, when I was in a critique group in, because you talked about murder earlier, when I was in a critique group when I lived in Texas, Always. I was working on a YA novel when I lived in Texas and it was so dark. I'm not even gonna talk about it right now. It was so dark. Now I'm like, I'm You're like, like, what? like what? YA, horror? Yes, what? 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 Order? Yeah. <laughs> um, I write issue oriented books. And I think part of it is because of my background. Um, I'm an abuse survivor myself. And I think part of it is um, me being a journalist. And I, yeah. and, you know, just looking at just, I have a big thing about a deep, deep psychological need for justice in all forms um, yeah. because of my background. Um, so I'm always looking to um, like expose the injustices in the world and the screws and, and that kind of stuff. And so um, it was funny because <laughs> every week when we would meet, we met at the Books a Million in Grapevine Mills Mall. And um, <laughs> the group was like, okay, do we just want to tackle Lisa's so that because it was a nighttime meeting so that we can go to sleep tonight because it's the last one we read i i can never fall asleep and um, so when i left when i left texas they threw me a going away party and they took the the book the clue the clue game board game mm -hmm. and they um altered all the things and it was <laughs> and it was just like as it because i I hurt people in my books and um, in that book anyway. And, uh, and so they had like, they even bought me like a bottle of poison. And it was, it was a fun thing. But so I will never write a picture book because I'm just, I'm not, well, I can't say I will never write it, but I, I can't picture myself writing happy, happy, joy, joy, throwing sunshine and rainbows places. Right. Um, I do have a couple of thoughts toward YA, but I doubt I'll go to back to YA um, yeah. now that I'm in middle grade. But I do have three ideas for books for um, adults. Hmm. So I think I would like to one day write some adult novels. Um, but again, I can't even say that out loud or my agent will hear me in New York and start uh, screaming at me. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be like, stay in your own <laughs> lane. <say> anything. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. This, this will go nowhere but between the three of us. Yes. That's right. Nobody will yeah. ever hear this. <laughs> no one will ever know. <laughs> you can say with us. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, gosh, there's so many other things. Like, we could go on and on asking questions, at least I could. Um, but we had to narrow it down so much because it was just like, we got to ask everything. <laughs> we probably have time for one more question, I think, though. Question? Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. What's a good one that we can kind of, I think the, the only thing I could, I really wouldn't like it. Was there a really hard part? Like what is the hardest scene that you had to write or, um, like what was the most difficult part? Like, you know what I mean? Like emotionally for you personally, that you knew you had to put it down a paper. Um, but it still took you know what I mean? Like that little bit of, I mean, maybe something took bravery or um, maybe you felt like maybe if I don't include this, but if I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like if there was something there that was really difficult for you to write, but you knew that you wanted to do it because you had something to say. I, um, on my wall, I have these pictures of quotes because I collect quotes mm -hmm. and um, I'm trying to find Here's, okay, so I was dusting yesterday, so. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> What? You said I never dust, you're better than me. Now I feel that, like I'm home and that's dust. my weakness. I, I'm very organized and I vacuum, well, my robot vacuums, but I hate to dust because it takes forever. But um, I made these myself since I can do some graphic art that's and stuff. Awesome. And I have to take off my glasses to read because I'm that age. Um, but it's by D.W. Winnicott. Mm -hmm. And it says, writers are people driven by the tension between the desire to communicate and the desire to hide. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's really true because, you know, there's a part of me that wants people to understand. Um, and that's where this other quote came in that I read yesterday. If I hadn't dusted, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be prepared to answer this question. <laughs> um, but Christy and, I got to take it off the wall. Um, Christy and Martine, I want someone to read these words and understand me for just one second so I'm not alone with my thoughts. And- um, Yeah, those are great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I always struggle with that. I, I really want people to understand my protagonists and my stories. Yeah. But sometimes that means you open up a vein and bleed really right. all over. Um, but there is one poem that if, if I'm ever asked to do, sometimes people want me to read a, a poem or two. <clears throat> There's one that I will never read out, out loud, and that is Behold the Thing. Mm. Um, that one was the hardest to write. Um, yeah. And there's no way I could read that out loud without completely just bawling my eyes out. It yeah. was really hard to read, um, to write. Um, and even when I, even when I go through it, <laughs> Because you know the editing process uh, is kind of lengthy, but then then you have the copy editing process, and there's like four or five different versions of different copy editors who do this and they do that. Mm -hmm. And so every time I had to write it, read it, I was just like, "Oh god, here I go again. I got to read this." Um, but so yeah, that's that one was the hardest one, and that's where she's confronting her mom. Yeah. Uh, and spinning around in the room and stuff. But um, really that good. one was the hardest one to write. You could feel that. You that was probably it. the saddest part. Yeah, mm -hmm. the saddest most, because you were talking about the one where she confronted her, confronted the mother. Yeah, I think it was yeah. the most saddest, most liberating. Right. You know what I mean? Part Exactly. It was painful, but it was like, you just want to root so hard for her and cry with her and I don't know. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, appreciate that, that was it. The hard one. Mm -hmm. um, you guys got to read this book, by the way. <laughs> the audience out there, if you can't already guess, it's five out of five. Uh, Samantha would say ten out of ten because <laughs> we have to butt heads about the reading system. But if there were more stars to give, we'd give them a hundred percent because it's just awesome, so moving. Um, yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so and you can you can pre-order it on Amazon, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can order it anywhere. You can order books. So you can get it from an independent bookstore. Oh, cool. You can get it from Penguin Random House. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it from, I've seen it on Target. Target, mm -hmm. their book site, Books a Million, all kinds of places. Awesome. So you heard it here. And from you can also get it at the library. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we have it. Whoop, whoop. We also have the author here. Oh, uh, we're cooler than you. We're cooler than you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I told, I, I keep telling Tammy, um, I need you to order a million copies, please. Yes. Yes, 100%. Yes. You, you need to have like a little library book signing. Oh, please. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> as soon as the stupid virus gets better, I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah, we'll come. We'll come with our copies. We'll be like, we're gonna be running up with three copies. And I'm like, oh, me first, me first. I told my mom about it. She was like, well, give me a copy. And I said, well, you can't have it yet. <laughs> so I will buy you one. I promise. She was just like, okay, I really want to read it because she was with me through all, you know, all my childhood stuff, obviously. So mm -hmm. she's gonna love it because that. Oh gosh, I'm so excited. You guys have to get your hands on this. You have to read it. Yeah. You have to like soak it in. You have to email us, tell the world about it. Um, but don't tell about the boy. Yeah, but don't no, tell not yeah, that don't. part. That, mm, That's yeah. a secret. Not, Nobody's going to know about just that. Just turn your ears off. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, Lisa, for joining us. Yes. Well, thanks for having me. I was excited. I was like, oh, I need to be on. But not oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what an honor. And we're just like, oh, my gosh, we have an author. What are we going to do? We're going to mess it up. <laughs> It's like, oh no. So it's really great that you joined us today and it was a really fun time. It was awesome. Yeah, it was great. So, all right, guys, yeah. thank you for joining us. And we hope you guys go pre order, pre -order this book, read it, tell us about it. That awesome. And we will see you guys on our next podcast. Yes. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.